Yeah, on day one back from our, our Louisville match last weekend, um, I told the group that this week is all about improvement, gave them several bullet points um, and things that we need to, to, you know, clean up because this is probably one of the most important matches of our season thus far. Um, I know we're only six games in, but um, super important that we lead with uh, aggressive stance, both in possession and out of possession. We have to get a result. You guys brought in three new players over the last week or so. Can you maybe just go through each of those three and talk about maybe, I know you only, you only have one so far in training, yeah. but what you're looking forward to having from them? Um, it's always a, a unique situation when you bring new players into a team. Um, you know, as, as the coach of this squad, I want to make sure that my locker room stays tight and we have the addition of three excellent quality players. Um, but what that does to a locker room is that it might, it might shift some mindset, it might um, affect some players, but so far as we've seen, you know, Amandine come in and even training today, she's, she's just dove right in with the group um, and her personality fits really well within us. A uh, hard worker, very focused on the game, and then from Amandine specifically, I'm just excited for her her leadership, her experience. Um, we talk so much about you know reading the moments of the game, and I think that's something she's excellent at. So looking forward to having her um, responsibility and leadership out on the pitch for us. Can't speak about the other ones yet; they're not here yet. Uh, Lauren Flynn, um, her being a, a rookie, getting an opportunity in the back line. Uh, how do you think she handled the moment? And want to see her progress through the weeks. I had a meeting with Low Flow yesterday. Low Flow is what we call her. Um, and I just, you know, attested to how proud I was of her to step in in a match when um, she hadn't seen the field yet for us as a Royals player. And so for her NWSL debut to come in against a, a powerhouse team like Louisville, a lot of threats. Um, you know, we, you saw on the score line, they, they definitely gave us um, a run for our money and, and put us in a lot of difficult situations. But speaking in terms of low flow and, and what Lauren Flynn brings to this group is she's been one of our hardest workers since day one. Um, you know, in, in training, she's willing to play any position at any time. Um, she just jumps in there and, and gives it her all. And that's something that I really appreciate out of her. And, and in her rookie season, um, you know, her starting point is, is very high. She comes from a national championship Florida State team. Um, experience playing in those big games and so when she stepped in for center back for us um, and albeit she only knew maybe 24 hours beforehand because we had a late injury to, to Kaylee Real um, you know she handled it really well and that's what being professional is all about and I'm excited to see her journey through her career. What are you seeing the, the step up in competition having coached at the college level to the professional how steep is the learning curve and how are you seeing your players who were in college last year adjust to being pros now? There's a huge learning curve from the college game to the pros. And I think our rookies in that locker room will tell you that it's a huge jump from, from their previous teams. Um, you know, speed of play, intensity, professionalism, focus, it's, everything's higher at this level. And, you know, there's only 14 NWSL teams. So it's a very small margin of players that can go from the college game into the pro game. Um, and only you know the strong ones survive, and we have a lot on our roster today. But all of which have taken everything in stride. I think we started five rookies last game, um, and so I'm pushing that group along every single day, trying to catch them up to speed. But it's it's a difficult task, and this league is very good and competitive. So, um, but I don't think it's without uh, within or out of reach from our with our players. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm very supportive in kind of helping our rookies along the way. Looking at Houston, how different are they without Marie Sanchez? I'm not sad that she's not there this weekend. Um, but they've also made some additions yep. during this time too. You know, Paige Nielsen slotting in potentially in their in their center back positions. Um, they've got Ramona Bachman, who who can definitely definitely ask questions and create problems for us. Um, they still have a very quality team, and and they're gonna provide us a great challenge tomorrow. So, um, but I'm certainly not sad that Maria Sanchez won't be on the field tomorrow. As you look at uh, the league and how foreign coaches are coming over from big clubs, they have one in Fran Alonso coming from Celtic. How are you seeing that influence the way that NWSL teams are playing? 
I think each coach comes in here and, and tries to put their new spin on the game. Um, I know for myself personally, like I wanted to be, you know, get away from more of the transitional style of, of the old school NWSL model um, and be a team that's much more possession based and creative and um, I'm not sure. I, I've been very interested in, in seeing what Fran brings to Houston. They're a aggressive, high pressing, intense team that commits a lot of numbers forward both in the attack and in the press. Um, and it's exciting to watch them, and so I'm really looking forward to a, a great match tomorrow. What's been the message in the locker room this week? Improvement. Um, I think coming off a 5-1 loss is, is hard to, to take, but I told the players, you know, chins up and chest out. We, we take it and we, we run with it. Um, I hate that my team is sitting at the bottom right now because they're much better than that. Um, but if anything, it's, it's given us a moment to step back um, and realize where we need improvement and where we need to learn. And the girls are taking that in stride, and I'm happy for, for that. Um, but we have a long ways to go. You mentioned this was probably one of the bigger matches that you've had so far this, this year. What's your message to the fans to give them out to AFF tomorrow night? Mm -hmm. What's your message? <laughs> Um, I think this is one of the most important matches that we will have all year. Like I said before, I know we're only six games in, but needing a result um, and and having being in a in a must win situation, um, we need our team to rally. And I think the best way that this city and these players will rally is if we have kind of that full crowd behind us. Um, it's it's so fun to play for this city, and I know we want to get the win tomorrow. So. I'm hoping that we'll put on a good show and you'll see a lot of aggressive play from us. Uh, Houston's like the first three back that you're going to be coming up against like full out and out three back. We um, think. We think. Um, how do you look to combat like their overload in the midfield, especially with you guys only having the three? Uh, I think we're going to play super aggressive tomorrow. I'm so excited to go against the three back. It's something that we haven't seen yet this season. Um, there will be a lot of really fun matchups tomorrow. Um, I plan, like I said, to be really aggressive in our press um, and in possession as well, and we'll see how the matchups shake out. How do you go about preparing for a team that there's only one game without Maria Sanchez and mm -hmm. change tactics like midway through that game against Portland? How do you a, go about using that sample yeah. size to prepare for tomorrow? A big characteristic of this group is adaptability and having the versatility or the willingness to kind of read what the opponent gives you. In every single game that we go into in the NWSL, it's, it's unpredictable. There's chaos, there's you know, new pictures that we've never seen before, and I'm gonna ask my players to, to read what the opponent gives us. I tell them that all the time. Um, and so whatever's thrown at us tomorrow, I, I hope we take it in stride and we adapt, because that's what we do. In the Louisville game, the thing I noticed with Lauren is she kind of drove up the field a lot more than we saw from Kate and in the first mm -hmm. few games. Um, now, perhaps having on you in there for a little bit, like, what do you hope to get out of that connection? Yeah, sliding uh, Amandine into our, our midfield might give us some new pictures. Um, we've really been hopeful to kind of build through our central channels and play through our midfield group. Um, I think she will add that connectivity that we've been missing um, or just kind of add to our overall connectivity in general. And uh, you'll see in Lauren Flynn, as you mentioned, she's an aggressive center back that'll step forward and play forward, and I'm looking forward to seeing the connection between those two tomorrow. How much do you think that will be important tomorrow versus Houston breaking the first line of pressure? That she was a few times with Blue where she kind of dribbled past her forward and she opened up a bunch of space. Yeah, and, and I always encourage my center backs to, to bait the press, draw on the pressure, um, eliminate the opponent, hopefully with their first pass or even maybe a, a second line um, sorry, with their first touch or maybe with a second line pass. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Low Flow kind of breaking that initial pressure of their, of their two nines.